Hello, my name is Grant Kramer, and I am a professor emeritus at the University of Nevada, Reno. And today I will be continuing my winemaking series on secondary fermentation. Primary fermentation is what is conducted by the yeast. Secondary fermentation is what is conducted by lactic acid bacteria. It's also known as malolactic fermentation. Malolactic fermentation is principally used to reduce acidity in the wine. It is started by adding lactic acid bacteria to the wine. Enococcus eni is the most common bacteria that is used, but there are other bacteria that can also cause beneficial effects to your wine. Malolactic Fermentation, is also known as MLF, is caused by bacteria that convert malic acid into lactic acid. This is a decarboxylation reaction of the malic acid producing CO2. Malic acid is a tart acid commonly found in apples and strongly affects the tartness of the wines that we taste. By converting it to lactic acid, which is found in milk, it is a much softer acid and therefore softer on our palates, making the wine less acidic. MLF is commonly used in red wines and sometimes used in Chardonnay wines, which is a white wine. It can be used in other white wines, but it's not very common. Some Chardonnay wines are blends of the MLF treated wines and non MLF wines, say a 50 50 uh, production, a mixture of each, to develop or maintain specific or certain characteristics that the winemaker is looking for. MLF does change the aromas and flavors and physical properties of the wine, producing such compounds as dye acetyl, which is a buttery flavor, and glycerol, which contributes to mouthfeel and the body of the wine. Many times, MLF can improve a wine, but can also have negative effects on a wine, such as the production of acetic acid, the main acid found in vinegar. So factors that affect malolactic acid fermentation. How do we get malolactic acid fermentation to go when it can be tricky at times? Well, there are factors that influence the fermentation, such as ethanol, the pH of the wine, the temperature, the presence or lack of nutrients, and the SO2 concentration. So ethanol is inhibitory to malolactic fermentation it's toxic to the bacteria. However, the bacteria can acclimate or adapt to ethanol concentrations of 12 to even 14% ethanol. One way you can avoid toxicity of ethanol is to start the malolactic fermentation early at lower alcohol levels while the yeast are still fermenting the sugars. However, MLF can produce volatile acidity or VA if there's too much sugar present. So most people start their MLF at zero bricks. There's still a little bit of sugar there, and most of it is in the form of pentoses of unfermentable sugars, such as arabinose and ribose, but it's safer to do it at this level. Others do start their malolactic fermentation with more sugar present before it is the primary fermentation has completed. And then one final note is that there are different strains of malolactic bacteria or lactic acid bacteria, and they can be more or less alcohol tolerant. And people are always trying to select for more alcohol tolerant strains. Wine has a low pH, and pH can be inhibitory to the bacteria. If the pH is too high, then spoilage bacteria can grow in the wine. Thus, that would be undesirable. We want to keep the acidity in the wine sufficient to inhibit 
other bacteria that might contribute to volatile acidity or even turn our wine into vinegar. Thus, one must compromise on the pH. Typically, MLF will go between a pH of 3.1 and 3.6, which will still prevent the spoilage bacteria. The pH range, again, is dependent on the bacteria used. A low pH may increase the sensitivity of the bacteria to ethanol. MLF, if used, will reduce your titratable acidity by as much as one to three grams per liter of wine and raise the pH up to 0 0.3 units of the wine. So if this is a desirable characteristic that you need to change in your wine, then do so. But it can also have other impacts on the properties of your wine, such as color, as anthocyanin color is highly dependent on the pH of the wine. So be careful. Temperature is another factor that can affect the malolactic fermentation. If the wine is too warm, it may increase the sensitivity of the bacteria to ethanol. If the wine is too cold, it may inhibit bacterial activity and their reproduction, and it therefore may go into a dormant period, which can happen if your barrels, for example, are in a cellar where it gets cold and it may not warm up enough until the springtime and allow the malolactic fermentation to go to completion. The optimum temperature for MLF in a wine is between 20 and 25 degrees centigrade, which is 68 to 77 degrees Fahrenheit. The lactic acid bacteria need nutrients. They need sugar, either in the form of hexosis or pentosis, and they need malic acid. They need nitrogen-containing compounds such as amino acids and purines. They will not respond to DAP or the diammonium phosphate that we use to feed our yeast. One can add nutrients to the bacteria when rehydrating them if they are in dehydrated form. In other cases, you can buy the bacteria already in a liquid containing container and nutrients may have already been given to them in the liquid. In addition, the bacteria can get nutrients from the lees, that is the dead yeast or the dying yeast in the wine, which will be releasing their nutrients into the wine as they die. And this can be further stimulated by stirring the lees that have settled to the bottom of your wine container one to two times per week. However, in doing so, you also run the risk of mixing in too much oxygen, and that can cause oxidation or loss of fruit flavors and other things. So one has to be careful when doing these practices. And the final thing is SO2 concentration. High concentrations of SO2 can be inhibitory to the MLF. It, the musts were initially treated to 50 parts per million SO2 or less, then the concentration should be low enough of the SO2 by the end of the yeast fermentation or primary fermentation to allow MLF to start. Ideally, you want the SO2 concentrations to be 10 parts per million or below, but MLF can proceed at 20 to 25 per parts per million in many cases. Do not raise your SO2 concentrations for the protection of your wine until the MLF is completed. So in summary, malolactic fermentation or MLF is used mainly to deacidify a wine to make it less tart. MLF can be tricky to start and tricky to finish completely. MLF also changes the aromas, flavors, and physical properties of the wine, many of which are desirable attributes.
MLF can also create negative effects to the wine. So it is important to understand all the factors that affect MLF and the lactic acid bacteria that perform it. Well, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like this video and subscribe to my channel if you're interested in additional videos. Have a great day.